Retro Days. The topics we choose to discuss here at Retro Days are exceedingly narrow and often paired with granular dissection. While this sort of analysis is rewarding, see previous videos focusing on telecommunication, Nicktoons, and laser tag, there's something to be said for stepping back to observe the way in which a multitude of elements can affect the entire experience. It's with this notion in mind, we invite you to join us on an exploratory journey of all those little things that helped make the days and weeks leading up to Halloween so monumental. So, you may want to pause this video to heat up a big mug of apple cider or grab an ice-cold pumpkin ale, because things are about to get <clears throat> Halloweeny. The scents in the air are undeniable. There's that sweet decay of leaves, a whiff of chimney smoke, and a heavy dose of mischief winding through every chill breeze that cascades over our skin. School may be in session, but there's still no other month as rife with devilish possibility as October. Even in the 80s and 90s, kids knew Halloween was more than just a single night of cavorting. It was an entire month of wonder. October brought with it weekends of family outings, nights of scary movies, and weekdays of quiet preparation when we should have been doing our homework. One of the first indications that the world had grown dim and amber in the dying light of summer was the sudden appearance of all things black and orange. Where once there stood a display of back-to-school items, now you'd find a stack of Ben Cooper costumes or boxes filled with Halloween candy. Going shopping in October could often be a fascinating and exciting experience as a kid, as long as you were going to the right kinds of stores and had your allowance to spend. Your run-of-the-mill supermarkets were okay, what with monster cereals, Halloween candy, Halloween displays, and seasonal baked goods, but far from the pinnacle. For my money, the local corner store or pharmacy was the place to be. Perhaps it was due to the smaller size of these shops, but they always seemed to be jam-packed with Halloween goods when compared to supermarkets. This is where you'd find those stacked boxes of Ben Cooper and Collegeville costumes. See our previous video on that very subject. This is where entire aisles of latex masks and ghoulish robes were hung. This is where the checkout counter was littered with novelties like squeaky pumpkins, rubber rats, plastic spiders, vampire fangs, Halloween wind-up toys, light up pins, glow sticks, pumpkin pails, flexi Halloween creeps, and much more. Every store of this kind invariably offered a wide array of makeup choices too, including full kits, latex prosthetics, face paint, and the must-have tube of blood. Searching further through the aisles, intrepid ghouls might uncover a host of decoration possibilities, including tabletop blow molds, motionettes, and die-cut posters. Arriving back at home may have felt momentarily depressing, but that was only until you remembered all the ghostly decorations you duped your parents into buying. Halloween may have still been days or weeks away, but there was still plenty to do. Digging into the bags, you placed the outdoor lights to the side. Then you inspected the two melted popcorn decorations. One jack-o'-lantern and one black cat. As for the indoor stuff, well, you had a small pile of die-cut decorations. These reminded you of school because they were the sorts of things teachers like to pin to corkboards and tape along the hallway walls. These were invariably of the cutesy variety. Big doe-eyed witches who looked more like little kids, happy ghosts, and smiling pumpkins. Luckily, the ones your parents let you purchase had sharper teeth, so to speak. The posable skeleton, probably your favorite of the bunch, but the ferocious black cat, that was no slouch either. After taping these up around the house, you retrieved a couple of blow molds. One was a pumpkin atop a cat, and the other a ghost holding a pumpkin, and plugged them in on the mantle. Your parents wouldn't spring for a motionette, but there was always next year. Besides, the house had already begun its autumnal transformation, and something deep inside your chest had begun to glow orange and black. 
two key elements to making the most out of any Halloween season, be it in the 80s or the 2000s, were trips to pumpkin patches and haunted houses. Often the pumpkin patches were located on apple orchards, which worked to amplify the seasonal atmosphere. And truly, this was the autumnal side of the October coin. Gone were the ghosts and goblins, and in their place, we found hot apple cider, apple picking, hay rides, and corn mazes. For those living in cities, the yearly pumpkin hunt could have been an excuse to take a trip to nearby rural territories, admiring the changing leaves as they burst into vibrant reds, yellows, and oranges. The crisp air whipping through the open windows smelled of smoldering leaf piles and brought contented smiles to our faces as we imagined the pumpkins and apples we'd soon be carting home. No two pumpkin patches were exactly alike, but they all held the same fantastic potential. Acres of orange orbs awaited in the brush, and it was your job to find the perfect one. On the way home, as the early night began to swallow up the sun, your mom or dad may have asked in their spookiest voice, Who wants to visit the haunted house? A cold chill may have run through your chest, but that didn't stop your giddy answer of heck yeah! Now came the other side of the Halloween coin. Right this way! One of the things they're doing with electronics, isn't it? the one draped in cobwebs and howling insanely into the sky as spiders crawled over its flaking green skin. You know, the good stuff. Outside the haunted house, people in costumes tried to scare you, but it was no good. You'd been watching horror movies for years now, and some dumb fake blood wasn't about to, oh my God, that guy's coming at us with a chainsaw, run. Oh my God, Whew, wow, Whew. You'd never admit it, but the whole chainsaw gag really did get you. Maybe it was all the strobe light effects and wailing sounds coming from speakers, but it had been an effective experience and you couldn't wait to go again next year. Until that time, you settled into the couch and clicked the television on. Some Halloween specials would have to suffice. Seasonal television programming had a way of polishing the spooky atmosphere of October to a high Auburn sheen. As soon as McDonald's started peddling their yearly pumpkin pails, you knew Halloween wasn't far away. And although some of them made you roll your eyes, the Halloween safety commercials also often had free offers. Some Burger King locations gave away free flashlights in a trick-or-treat bag with a free drink coupon to boot. Dunkin' Donuts rolled out their new spooky designs. I'm here, and Dunkin' Donuts is pressing up their donuts for the occasion. Monster cereals dragged themselves from the grave. Toys R Us regaled you with tales of costumes, tricks, and treats. Us doesn't miss a trick, and the prices are a treat. We've Most channels started showing horror movies, and seemingly every horror movie of the year advertised October releases in theaters. The closer to Halloween you got, the more likely there were blocks of horror movies, television specials, or Halloween episodes of sitcoms to watch. The double feature of It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown and Garfield's Halloween Adventure? Well, that was the pinnacle of such October treats. Though older kids may have preferred the television airings of Halloween 1 and 2 or Night of the Living Dead. For others, the best part was the yearly costume change sitcoms made for the event. Some favorites included The Simpsons Treehouse of Horrors, Roseanne, Home Improvement, Family Matters, and ALF. That still left other ghoulish entertainment like Disney's Halloween Treat, The Worst Witch, The Midnight Hour, Witch's Night Out, and Universal Monster Movies. Look, no matter the channel, no matter the preference, clearly there was always something great to watch in October. While watching all those great Halloween specials, every kid needed an enormous spread of snacks. And the more festive, the better. Homemade pumpkin and apple pie with ice cream, caramel apples, popcorn balls, pigs in a blanket, Rice Krispie treats made with monster cereal, spooky sugar cookies. Whoo, doggy, I am salivating just thinking about the endless treats. Still, it wasn't October without the addition of some roasted pumpkin seeds. 
In many houses, that meant harvesting some fresh ones, and there was only one way to do that. Choosing the right night to carve pumpkins was important. You didn't want to do it so early that they rotted before the 31st, but you also didn't want to do it so late that you didn't have at least a few nights to enjoy both the roasted seeds and the grim, grinning specter of your creation. Everyone's personal jack-o'-lantern carving traditions are different, but one universal element might include playing a spooky sounds cassette, record, or CD as you worked. Some families listened to The War of the Worlds, which famously aired on the Mercury Theater on the Air and broadcast at 8 p.m. on October 30th, 1938. Some contemporary radio stations will still broadcast their own versions in late October to keep the tradition alive. Finishing up by roasting those tasty pumpkin seeds for later consumption was an absolute necessity and an addition to your personal traditions you should consider if you don't usually partake. Attempting to cover every single atmospheric element of a nostalgic October, that's near impossible, but I hope we managed to discuss most of the heavy hitters. Like any good memory, it was often the little things around the periphery feeding into the overall vibe of the holidays, be it Halloween or the other cheerier ones that arrived right on its heels. <laughs> what were some of those little things for you that made October and the Halloween season feel special? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. And don't forget, next week brings our final Halloween episode when we take you on a nighttime trek into the deep dark of Halloween as we trick or treat together. If you enjoy our content, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and maybe even activating that ubiquitous notification bell. It really does make a huge difference. Let's meet again next week to celebrate yesteryear and Halloween right here on Retro Days. Clanky, clanky.